Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, National Parts Depot and Penrite Oil. And welcome to another exciting episode of Classic Restos. Of course, not possible without the continued support of Shannon's Insurance, National Parts Depot and Penrite Oil. In fact, if you combine your house and contents insurance with your current car or bike cover, you'll receive a 10% multi-policy discount. If you pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call on 134646, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. You can also visit Shannon's online at shannons.com.au and while you're there, you can sign up and become a member of the Shannon's Club. When it comes to the finest in oils and coolants, you cannot go past Penrite Oil. Whether you've got a 253, a 308 or a 350, the HPR range of oils will suit you down to the ground. Another good thing about Penrite too, Australian owned and a family ran business. They've been established since 1926. Find out more as to how Penrite Oil can help you. Visit them online at penriteoil.com.au. And how exciting is it to have National Parts Depot as a major sponsor of Classic Restos? And believe me, when it comes time to rebuild your American-built Classic GM or Ford, National Parts Depot have a three million part inventory in total that may assist you. You can contact them, they'll send you a catalogue relevant to your build. See them online at npdlink.com. And on today's show, I have travelled to Australia's capital city of Canberra. And if you love football, meat pies, kangaroos and Holden cars, well, you're going to love this. Welcome to the ACT Holden Day. This is the 2013 ACT Holden Day. It's located on the grounds of the old Parliament House in Australia's Capital Territory. This is an event that represents Australia's own car, the Holden. Whether it's a 1948 215, Australia's first Holden, through to a legendary 1970s limited edition Monaro, this show will quench your thirst for the best examples. Today's event is supported by seven different Holden car clubs. It's the camaraderie, car club support, and the magnificent vehicles from yesteryear that makes these shows what they are. Time now to go and have a chat. Here we go, first cap off the rank we have Daryl. How are you Daryl? Yeah, I'm well Fletch, yourself? Good mate, good, love your 1974 GTS Monaro. What a beautiful car. Yeah, thanks mate, thanks. It's um, it's not a big budget car, but it's, uh, yeah, we built it to have a bit of fun and yeah, it's, it's paying dividends. That's what I like, interviewing somebody where it's not always the case. You haven't gone and spent 50, 60, 100K. Mm -hmm. You know, it's good to see a guy in the backyard, develops a car, outsources a few parts of it, ends up in the paddock looking so nice. You know, one thing that really stood out when I first saw this car this morning was that back section of glass. Now, we've been looking at these Monaros for years. Whether it's the paint colour, contrasting on the grass, I don't know, but the back section just looked beautiful, Daryl. Back in 74 when the car was built, that was, uh, it was a highlight, you know, like um, it was, um, everyone was talking about the the two-door with the big back window, weren't yeah. they, you know? so well, What a styly car, though. I mean, two-door, I mean, it's Australia's Pontiac. I mean, it's a real classy car. Yeah, it is, yeah. It's like our American GDO or something, it isn't it? Before we start talking about the interior, give us a rundown on what you've done under the hood. Uh, yeah, well, um, like I said, it's a genuine car, but it's not original. It's um, It's got a uh, 400 Chevy in it now, so... Um, He's made it pull the house off the foundations, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, it gets the gets the top off the custard. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's it's had a bit of work done to it, you know. But but um, it's not radical. It's yeah. still very yeah. streetable. So uh, yeah, it's got that with the turbo 350 and the the Ford nine inch and the, the yeah. four wheel discs and bits and pieces. So kill, kill, kills you, Holden blokes, to say it's got a Ford nine inch in it, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, or GMH need to do a nine inch, don't they? they and do. we'd start they using do. them. That's the one. We move on through to the interior. Gorgeous bucket seats. We've got the houndstooth inserts. Beautiful. Yeah, look, it's pretty much as I bought it too, and um, I'm I'm the third owner to my knowledge, and um, not a lot's been done to it. So, and I'd like to keep it that way. Daryl, before we end, the paint colour, what is it? 
Um, well, it's actually uh, the factory bronze yep. um, with the blackouts, but um, the young guy who painted it actually tinted it a bit, yep. so it's a little bit darker than factory, yeah. but um, look, really happy with it. Um, like I said, it's not a big budget mm. car, but um, it's fun to drive. Well, that's what it's all about, Daryl, isn't it? Something reliable, it's a knockout car, it looks good, you can drive it anywhere. Need yeah. we say more, eh? Nah, good on you, Fletch. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Thanks very much. Well, Joe, we've already had a HQ on today's show, but it's a two-door. I'd like to feature your car, a 73 and a four-door. Yep. Beautiful example. Tell us about the car. Okay, it's been um, totally rebuilt, uh, a nut and bolt restoration. Um, it's come out as it is with all the features, um, factory 350, uh, power steering, factory air, uh, the original owner, I don't have much information on the originality of it, as in the owner, but we know the originality of it is it was ordered in a special colour and special interior. Mm. Uh, the owner didn't like the actual um, colour of the Monaro range at the time, so he actually got a HQ colour, and I believe it's off a Premier. Yep. And in those days, dealers used to wheel and deal, and, um, and they got it through. So um, it's made it a, a fairly rare car. I think if any Holden's grown on me over this past few years, it'd have to be a HQ. Mm, yeah, and, and they are, I think. Especially people in our era, the HQs, we grew up with them. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you don't see too many around today except these sort of places. I mean, back in the 80s, I mean, you'd see a HQ and you'd look the other way. That's right. And it's like, you know, seeing Commodores everywhere today. Exactly. That's how it was. Yeah. And we grew up with them. So, yeah, it's, you know, um, yeah, we all love them because we were young. We couldn't afford it. Yep. So now down the track, we've worked hard. And, um, yeah, we sort of, our childhood dreams. Good on you, Joe. Lovely to catch up with your mate. And it's guys like you that make classic restos in each and every episode. Thank you. Thanks. Fletch, and um, nice to see you. Right, time for Vic now. How are you, Vic? All right, Fletch, yourself? Yeah, good, mate. Good, long good. Time, long time. We watch you on TV, but it's been a while since I've yeah. actually seen that at the car show. So. Yeah, that's, well, that's right. All good things take time. Yeah. You get to see me again. That's true. That's yeah. that's, that's yeah. 100 percent right. Yeah. I tell you what, I'm just as happy to see you because this 1970 HG Monaro, this is colossal. You should see it. The interior is the first thing that smacks you around the head yeah. with this car. That's what makes actually the car pretty unique because. It was ordered from you with, uh, by my uncle, and they call it a houndstooth, which is the inserts, the black and white material. But what makes it unique is what you see in you know, the orange vinyl. Well, I haven't, I haven't seen another one in, in the flesh. is usually black vinyl. Yeah. So this has got the indie orange, actually yeah. called the indie orange vinyl, yeah. with the, uh, the houndstooth I inserts. I mean, yeah. call it baby poo, call it what yeah. you will, but I love it. And I think it'd be one of those interiors where you would either love it or hate it. I but so. it's also the type of interior that you know straight away, and, and it really does match the whole contrast of the car. And I also love the originality too. Look at the radio in Dash there. You know, got to comment about those radios where every state of Australia had its own range of channels yeah, there. Yep, so true, yep, yeah, so yep. What's happening under the bonnet? Oh, it's only a small V8, 253. Well, my uncle went into Maxtrot Motors and he saw one of these in the showroom and he said, that's what I want. But it had the 350 in it. Yeah. And he said, I want everything. Well, this has got except the 350. And they said, well, if you want that trim, you've got to order it. And he, they argued and whatever, not argued, but... Yeah. Um, and to keep him happy, because he was worried about fuel, so, but anyway. What country was your uncle from? Malta. Yeah. Yep, yeah. yep, Uncle John, yep. Yeah, that's yep. good. i uh, got a lot of respect for you guys, you know, you, you and your cars and your ah, hard-working Maltese family, eh? Hey? Actually, when people ask me things about the car, I feel so proud for him, yeah. because if it wasn't for him, well, it wouldn't look what it is today, Absolutely. because... He just pres he used it, but he looked yeah. after it so much, you know. A lot of respect all around. Vic, thank you so much for getting back on the show again. Lovely to see you again. No Love the car, mate. Thank good, you. good on you, hey. Thank you. Right. I hope you're really enjoying the ACT Holden Day on today's episode of Classic Restos. Of course, it's thanks to Shannon's Insurance, National Parts Depot, and Penrite Oil. Stay in your favourite chair. There's more Classic Holdens up after this. Beside me here we have the mighty FC Holden. Back in the day it ran from 1958-1959. It featured a 138 cubic inch grey engine and a three-speed manual transmission. Price when new was a little over $2,000 or equating to around £1,100. And back in the day almost 192,000 of these Holdens were built. Time for Robert on today's show. How are you, Robert? Very good, thanks, Fletch. How's yourself? Good, thanks, mate. Good. Thank you for bringing along your sensational 1967 HR Holden. Tell us about the car. I've had it for about 14 odd years, and uh, I bought it off a, a bloke in Canberra here who uh, was a golf pro, and um, I've 
you know, had restored it, part of it, and yeah, that's about it, yeah. And I've um, driven everywhere in it, yeah, been to all the HDHR Nationals, yeah, yeah Fletch, yeah. Isn't that good, oh, the old 186, they were a mighty six-cylinder, weren't it's, they? It's been very reliable, no, yeah. very happy with it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tough as nails, the old 186, and they were a smooth engine too, weren't they? Very smooth, yes, yeah, no, and very economical yeah. and reliable, yeah. yeah. Then again, you wouldn't want 186 cubes to be too thirsty, would you? No, definitely not, not this day, <laughs> Fletch, no, definitely not. Um, now, Robert, tell us about, um, in terms of the time you've had it, have you had to do much to the car? No, very little, only the... Uh, little TLC, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I've uh, tidied it up. I did the trim up because the, the the stitching come undone in the seats and they couldn't do it up again. So I had all yeah. the trim done in it, yeah. and just a few touch-ups where it's had a few stone chips and what have you. Yeah, yeah. no. Robert, this uh, must be like a limb to you. I mean, this car must mean a lot to you. You're never going to get rid of it? No, not at this stage, definitely not. Mm. There's been quite a few people who wanted to buy it off me, but no, it's, yeah. it's part of me. It's part of the family. When I see these deep dish steelies too, it takes me back to when I was a kid because I used to look at the P-platers back in the, well, the early to mid-70s, uh, way before I started driving, and they were always like the, the, the tough guys who used to have the, the deep dish steely wheels on their HR Holdens. Yeah, that's correct, yeah, yeah, no, and it's, it keeps it more original, mm. yeah, looking, yeah, than these later model yeah. uh, mag wheels I've got around today, yeah. yeah. Um, and plus it gives you the chance too to fit a wider tyre, which in, you know, most cases is what you need. Yeah, definitely so, especially if you're using it on the road, you know, yeah, for safety-wise, yeah. yeah, yeah, better than the old rag tyre. That's it. Yeah. That's it, Rob. No. Okay, mate, look, thanks for having a chat no, with us because no. it stands out in the paddock, it's a beautiful old car, it really is, it's, uh, it's got some NASCO accessories on there as well, and uh, no, good job, mate, it's a credit to you. No, thanks for that, Fletch. Thanks for talking to you. We have Albert now with a legendary hold. And the reason I say legendary, this was the shape. This was the design that was Australia's own car. Welcome to today's show, Albert. Thank you very much, Fletch. Now, 1950, this particular model. That's correct, yes. And how long have you had it for? Oh, about 35 years, 30 years. It's a beautiful car. I mean, I, I love this this first Holden. The waterfall grill, yes. um, the, the very original shape, the very first. It really does mean something, doesn't it? Well, it does. Well, it sort of reflects back on a Buick. In yep. the 46 Buicks yes. and 42 Buicks, yeah. I think that the design came from that from the United States, didn't it? It did, yeah. from um, General Motors over there, yeah, yeah. for sure, yeah. Flex, yeah. And uh, the 138 grey engine too was such a tradition in Australia. They kept yeah. it for so long, didn't they? Yeah, right through to 63. Yeah. Then the EH came out with the 179, etc. Yeah. yeah. Now, Albert, when you first got this car, what condition was it in? How much restoration work did you do? Well, I had to do a full restoration on it. Complete strip down, rebuild motor gearbox diff brakes, the whole bit, yeah. the paint, the upholstery, everything. Yeah. Albert, I'm amazed. You've got the original glove box manuals and the original invoice of the car up on the glass. That's correct, yes, and I've got the original rego plates on it there as well, so wow. it's all back to the factory. Wow. Yeah. I mean, getting an old car and restoring it is one thing, but when you've got that original documentation, that's just marvellous. That's right. That's why I would never sell the car because of that now. Mm. I've got all the... It's all original in factory now, so yeah. right down to the number plates. Albert, just for the fun of it, what do you think it'd be worth? Oh, if I'd say about 30, 35 maybe. Depends what someone wants to pay, I suppose, but yeah. that's what Shannon's sort of valued it at. Oh, okay. So, yeah. yeah. Well, you, you're with the best insurance company. Oh, we know that. <laughs> I've got my other three cars with them as well, yeah. so. Major sponsor of the show. Check them out at classicrestos.com.au. Oh, yeah. Albert, thank you so much for your time. I love the car. It's the only one of its kind here today on the paddock. It's been a real pleasure interviewing you, and it's just so good to see a guy that's keeping the dream alive with this original oh, Holden. Oh, you got to. Yeah. yeah. I can't let the Holden go. No, that's okay. <laughs> that's for sure. There'll be other things that'll go before that, eh? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Especially if I keep it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take care. Yeah, Thanks, thank Albert. Thank you very much, Fletch. Thank you. Thanks, mate. I love these Holdens, these early Holdens, 1964 EH. They're a beautiful shape. You know, they're not a bulky car. They've got nice lines, visibility's mm, yeah. good. They drive nice. You speak to the owners. They're, a, they're just a real honest yeah. model car, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Now, we've got a, quite a large collection of Holdens, and this one by far is one of the easiest ones to drive. Yeah. Uh, visibility is good out the windows. Yeah. It scoots along. It's an automatic, this one. Yeah. Um, you just put the foot down and off you go. Yeah, they're not a heavy car by any no, means. No, no. It's, uh, it's really a pleasure to drive. Darren, uh, the engine looks absolutely brand new as well. Before we talk about the engine, with the paint, has it had a respray? Never, no. So a cut back and a polish, that's it, Origin Basically, original that's paint. It. Yeah. yeah, I mean, no 50 year old car is without a touch up here or there, car park down or whatever, but this is no different, but it does have crow's feet in the paint, but to look at it here today, yeah. uh, you'd have to go a long way to find it. So Engine's been painted, right? We've painted the engine purely because the paint that was on it had fallen off, yeah. and it really didn't belie the rest of the car's condition. Yeah. Uh, 
I looked at it and I thought, nah, I'm not living with that. So <laughs> that's really, uh, to be honest, the only restoration point of the yeah. car is the engine. Darren, you've got an eye uh, for attention, my friend. There's no doubt about that. We look at the interior, uh, original seats there, I mean, when the Qantas Airways bag on the back seat. I mean, it's, it is a step back in time. It's yeah. just absolutely, it's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. No, it's, um, once again, it's, uh, it's all the hard work of Holden and the employees when they put it together. Yeah. Uh, and Patrick, the second owner, well, it's lived in the shed all its yeah. life. Yeah. It, uh, and, the and the glorious 179 up front too. Yes. What a beautiful, sweet running engine. They're like yeah. a, they just tick along like a Rolex, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. No, it's, um, Faultless. Uh, yeah. it, it really is very good for 50 year old car. Good on you, Darren. Well, we better go, mate, otherwise, we're going to turn it into the Darren half hour. <laughs> Thank you very much, Flesh, for having me. You're welcome, buddy. Appreciate it. And, uh, keep the dream alive with this. Love this car. Good on you, mate. Thanks for having us. Thank you. With me now, I have Colin Tierney, the president of the ACT Holden Day. Welcome to today's show, Colin. Thanks, Fletch. Mate, you put the weather on. Yeah, we did the weather. <laughs> You've done well. Now, there's seven Holden car clubs in support of this day. Yes, um, we formed a committee from seven local car clubs and um, that way we're spreading the load between the clubs instead of the load all being carried by one club yeah. and uh, yeah it's worked out pretty well. History of the event Colin, how long has it been running for? Um, probably about 20 years, 25 years yeah. and it's only, a, it's not every year, about it, usually every second year yeah. but we've had a six year gap this time Have you? so that's why we've we formed the committee and yeah. give it a go and see how it works. You welcome Holden owners from all over the area. Uh, where are the parameters if, if people want to become a part of this event, say for next year or the year after? Yeah, um, anywhere. Um, we've got cars from Sydney, Victoria, regional New South Wales, as well as Canberra. Yeah. Good on you, Colin. Well, if you've got a Holden and you want to be part of this, on the grounds here of the old Parliament House here in the ACT, it's a beautiful venue, and, uh, well, you'll be made very welcome by guys just like this. Thank you very much, Colin. Thanks, Fletch. Really appreciate it. No worries. Yeah, thank you. If you're after the DVD box sets of the show and to find out how the major sponsors can help you, go to classicrestos.com.au. While you're there, check out the link for the Fletch Tours to the United States of America in 2014. Back with more in just a moment. Welcome back. Look at this 1962 EK Holden. Back in an era where there was so much shape and style, you can see the resemblance of the 57 Chev when you look out the back. It was back in an era where Holden used to build cars and lace it with stainless steel and plenty of chrome. And back in a time, I guess, in Australia where they could produce such an outstanding product. You know, it was a fantastic transitional period too at the end of the EK before they went into the EJ with two totally dynamic different styled cars. This EK here ran right through to the end of 1962 and 1962 was also the introduction of the EJ Holden model. This model here is still hosting the 138 grey engine and that too carried through to the first EJ Holden. This shape too being the EK late in 62, the last of the high body style with the high hood and high roof turret before the EJ become lower and a little bit more wider tracked. In fact when it comes to styling it was pretty safe to say that there probably wasn't two more models by Holden that were so radically different between the EK and the EJ. The EK Holden was certainly symbolic in the history of Holden in Australia, with around 150,000 cars made back in the day. OK, although we featured this car, we talked about the transitional period from EK through to EJ, but the big fella come along. Andrew, welcome to today's show. G'day, Fletch. Nice to be here. Mate, you've driven from Dubbo, right? That's right, yeah. Headed off uh, yesterday morning for a leisurely drive. Yeah. yeah, absolutely beautiful. Enjoyed it. What a perfect day it was. OK, now for those people that aren't too familiar with the uh, geographic placements here in New South Wales, Australia, how much distance are we talking from Dubbo to the ACT? Uh, it's about, look, roughly speaking, I think it was about four... 450 kilometres. Oh, I roughly did about five hours, just cruised along sort of uh, 90, 100 k's. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that good to see this car in such almost concourse condition, mind you? It's not trailered, it's driven. Mate, it looks like it's come out of the back of a trailer. I mean, the, the way you've keep this car, but I guess it's nothing the hose and a chamois won't fix. That's it. You know, the bugs come off just as easy as they do on the new cars, mate. <laughs> well, Andrew, it's good to see a young bloke with one of these cars, mate. So, uh, yeah, I, I know it's a bit of a cliche in classic restos. I always thank the people for keeping the tradition alive, but that's what it means to me. When I see these cars, it's so nice to see the owners enjoying them, preserving them. Now, th this, is, this is great stuff. Thanks, mate, and I'm just happy for that young bloke bit. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Good on. Thanks, Andrew. Cheers. We maybe get up of a morning, we don't think of uh, the fraternity that own the very old cars. Now, what's going on there when it comes to oil? 
Oils for older cars are different from oils from our newer cars. Get back to your old, um, your pre-1920s cars, they had like very primitive oiling systems in them and very low detergent oils. So, and they were basically total loss systems, so basically most of the oil ran out of the car. Walk us through an oil, for example, that you would use in a 1910, 1915 model car. Well, Fletch, this would be one of our heritage oils, uh, LTM or MTH. LTM stands for light to medium grade, around about a mono 30 type grade oil. Then we look along the line and we, we come from the 1920s to an oil with a picture of a Mini on the front of it. How cool is that? Well, we developed an oil just for the uh, BMC Mini where it's a 20W50 uh, classic grade oil, high zinc and designed to run in the engine and the gearbox, to have an engine gearbox in one. So if you drive an older car right through to a British car and you're not too sure what type of oil suits you best, call the tech line. Utilise these people. They're easy to get hold of. Go to classicrestos.com.au. You know who the major sponsor is. Click on the logo to be directed to their website for more information. Thank you, Brendan. Thanks, Fletch. What's a Holden show? Without a Tirana. How are you, Peter? Good day, Fletch. How are you, mate? Good, thanks, mate. 1977 A9X. 1977 September A9X. That's wow. correct. The original one. How does it feel to own one of those? Oh, it feels really good now. Yeah. Um, when I bought it back in um, 13 years ago, it was sort of just okay. Yeah. Um, needed a good restoration, and I was a bit worried whether I'd sort of um, going to do me dough, but mm. no, I didn't do me dough. Oh, that's good. I mean, they, they really did set a precedent back in their day, didn't they? I mean, obviously a lot of Bathurst and Peter Brock. I mean, these things are great power-to-weight ratio package. Fletch, you mentioned Peter Brock. Um, I remember watching the, the, the Tranas running around Bathurst with Peter driving them, and I promised myself one day I'd get one of those, and yeah. I had to wait quite, quite a while, yeah. and, um, but I finally did get one. Yeah, but the power-to-weight ratio, fantastic to drive. They're an unreal car to drive. OK, now what have you done uh, in the time that you've had it? Uh, it's the original matching number's 308? 308, uh, it's still a stock standard 308, original matching numbers, uh, right through the drivetrain. Yep. Um, it was a bit of a, uh, a bit of a basket case when, uh, when I got it. It was being used as a dog's kennel, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you can imagine what it's like, yeah. So we've had See a that dog's kennel or chooks living in them, you know, you just don't know what you're going to get. But, um, yeah, you know, we've done a respray and uh, just freshened it up, but um, not a lot of money spent on it. Yep. It's all been done in the backyard. Yep. Uh, it's just my pride and joy. Peter, how does it drive as a car? <sighs> It drives like a 1977 car would drive. There's power nothing. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's quite rough. It's, yeah. um, it's heavy steering when it's down low speeds. But um, it's got everything, so I love it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Well, mate, in one sense, you're keeping the legacy alive with these A9Xs, and it's great to see one here. Not a lot here today. It's good to see one with its original engine and uh, just in its entirety, mate. And I appreciate you being on today's show. Thanks, Flesh. Well, what do you think of that? I hope you've enjoyed just some of the ACT Holden Day on this week's episode of Classic Restos. Now, don't forget, classicrestos.com.au is the website that you need for the DVD box sets of the show, along with other Classic Restos merchandise as well. While you're there, check out the major sponsors and as to how they can help you. As I say at the end of every episode of Classic Restos, no matter where you're watching from, until next week, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like Classic Restos on Facebook. Facebook.com forward slash Classic Restos TV. And episodes can be seen at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, National Parts Depot and Penrite Oil.